Um, what a blessed day this is. Are you feeling that, are you knowing in your heart that God is here, that he is ministering, that he is doing amazing things, not just here, but actually his presence is around the world. And I should have watched that video uh, myself yesterday because I saw it for the first time and I was in tears on the front, uh, on the front row, um, deeply moving. And uh, it's things that we don't, most of us would not experience in life, how terrifying that must have been to live through it. But God is doing a great work. And he will use this to bring the gospel of Jesus to the people around in the Philippines. I'm sure of that. God has a way of uh, taking terrible things and turning them uh, for his purposes to bring people to him. Hallelujah. Well, I want to uh, do something which is very important and, and very often at the beginning of the year, I, I do things like this because it's a good time to rededicate ourselves. And you'll remember that in one of the first services, uh, we all stood together and uh, we said a prayer together of dedication uh, about ourselves to God and ourselves to one another. And we are a unique church because we are made up of people from different countries, different languages, and we're made up of people from different traditions and different backgrounds. And that's amazing because normally you would, uh, trans you would uh, uh, migrate yourself to a church that you agree with all the time. Uh, but here we are a church of many different backgrounds, and yet we are one church in unity with Jesus Christ. And do you remember standing at the beginning, and we gave our uh, lives to God and our lives to one another? And I also think it's uh, uh, wonderful that we had Paul Benja last week. Wasn't that amazing? And uh, uh, Paul's thighs are still hurting from all those dips that he did. Uh, he sends his love to us at Salt Church, and, and he uh, actually called us forward, didn't he? He called us forward for prayer, and, and in fact, everybody was standing, and, and it was a great delight to see that we were standing at the front, and uh, Paul uh, prayed over us, and, and he encouraged us to move forward together in unity. And uh, uh, I did this last year, I think. Uh, I called the church council up here on stage, and I'm going to do that in a minute, because as your church council, as the leadership of the church, we also want to demonstrate that we are in unity, different backgrounds, different opinions, and that we are serving you, Salt Church, to the best of our ability. But I want to say a few words before I call them up. I want to say that it's four and a half years ago, nearly five years ago, that Helena and I came, and who knew what was going to happen? Who knew the journey that God was going to take us on? There is always a change of season when you have a different pastor, but this was a change of season, a change of location, a change of building, a, a change of everything that a church could ever go through. And so I want to honor our church council because this church council have stuck with me and Helena, have stuck with the issues through thick and thin. They have had to step up. They've had to endure very long meetings. They've had to uh, say their opinions. They've had to challenge decisions. They've had to grow in their faith. They've had to come together as all of us and, and seek the Lord. And sometimes we have cried together. And sometimes we have, we have cried out to God together. And yet this church council uh, with Helen and me, I want to honor them because it's been an incredible journey. And it's not been easy, as you know. And there, there are differences in, in churches, and there are things that happen. And uh, there's uh, a time when church can be hard, when leadership can be hard. And that's when we need to stand together. And this church council have stood. And they've stood together with me and with Helena. And uh, we've had a tough season because COVID also was difficult. And wasn't it brilliant hearing all the notices again? My goodness, we are moving forward as a church and we are moving out. So I want to invite the church council. We want to pray for one another. Can the church council please come now, please? Can you give them a big round of applause because they really do deserve it? Can I call all the church council, those who are here, to come forward and to join me and to join Helena on the stage? Uh, I have said it all, but these people are truly amazing. I count myself blessed to know them, and I count myself blessed as a leader also to be challenged occasionally, and I know that they love me for challenging them, which I've done on many occasion. And uh, we want to stand here before the church at the beginning of a new year as a sign of unity that your leadership 
has a servant heart. Like Christ had to serve people, we have a servant heart together to serve Salt Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, hold on, come on. Well, actually, you're going to pray at the end, aren't you? I want to uh, pray for these guys, and I know that I think some of them may well probably want to pray for me and for Helena as well. So let's just, in an attitude of prayer, thank God, and then I'm going to pray over them. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you that you call us together to be Christians in unity. You've called us together all on this council with different backgrounds, different heartbeats, different experiences, and yet you've called us to be one in unity for serving Salt Church in this place, for serving the church with the vision of, of reaching out and sharing the love of Jesus and to be a prophetic voice to come to Jesus, to people, to be saved. And Father, I want to thank you for each and every person on this council. You know them all by name, and we know them by name. And I want to pray collectively over them. What an amazing and wonderful bunch of people you have put together. Lord, I want to thank you for them and for standing through thick and thin in the journey that this church has taken over the last five years particularly. And some of them have been on the previous journey, and, and, they've, and they've served on the previous journey. But Lord, I want to thank you for this new season, this new beginning, this, this, this new vision, this new church, Salt Church. And I want to bless and honor every single person on the council. Lord, we love one another. I love you guys, and I respect you guys, and I thank you guys for all that you have done in enabling us as a whole church to get to the place that we have got. And I say all of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. As a church council, we want to say what a privilege it is to serve both you, our church family, and our pastors. God will never put a square peg into a round hole. And I have to say that Chris and Helena are fitted perfectly into the hole that God has put them into. Their main purpose here is to serve. They give clear guidance when it's needed, but they allow for question and discussion on any issue. That's any issue. As a church council, we have always felt supported, sometimes challenged. But Chris and Helena, we have total confidence in you as our leaders. Total confidence in you. Can I ask you as a church congregation to stand with us? We're going to pray for Chris and Helena. A couple of the members of the church council are going to pray. But let's use this as an act of unity as a church where we're saying to God, thank you for these wonderful people that you have put here to lead us for this time. And Chris and Helena, I pray that you will continue to serve God here in Los Montesinos for as long as his purpose is being served. Not yours, his. And we'll discuss that timing. <laughs> Father God, as a council, we come with a tremendous privilege that you have called us to serve you on the council and in this church. You've also called us to serve your servants, Chris and Helena. And that, Father, is a humbling privilege for us. We thank you for them because we are confident and we know that we know that you have called them to this place, in this area, for such a time as this. Father God, your word tells us that where there is unity, you command the blessing. Father, we stand now with our pastor and his wife, Chris and Helena. Before you, we stand in unity. We stand as one body. Although we might agree to disagree, we always come to unity. And we thank you because that is through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Father God, we know that you are going to be glorified in this place because you've called us to do a work. So we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, Father God, we just um, uh, are reminded, Lord God, that to some extent the challenges that we faced in this church, Lord God, pale into insignificance when we see what's going on around the world, Lord God. But we do thank you. It has been a challenge and it's been a journey. And you've blessed us with an amazing building in an amazing location. And you've given us an amazing pastor and an amazing pastor's wife. And Lord God, this small demonstration here, Father, goes no small way to just showing how much we love and appreciate them, Lord God. And although um, our meetings sometimes will drag on and Rosie thinks I've left home, Lord God, but we just thank you, Father God, that sometimes it's just been fun to serve them. And Lord God, and, and the fact that we have, we're united as one, Lord God, as a church council behind Chris and Helena, we love and support them. We ask you to bless them with such an anointing of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, as we go forward, that we will see amazing things happen. We'll see many added to your kingdom and we'll see many people encouraged and blessed in their walk with you, Lord God, and grow and mature as Christian believers, Lord God, and be bolder and bolder in their faith. So we thank you for the anointing on them. We thank you for Chris's amazing teaching, Lord God, and we thank you for all that Helena does. And we ask you, Lord God, to re reward them and bless them richly in their personal life. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a lot of love on this platform. <laughs> I'm feeling the love and I want to add to it because I absolutely love our church council. Every single one of you are such a blessing in all your own unique ways. And, you know, I love going to council meetings and I always have in this church. And it really is a privilege and an honor to serve alongside you all. And, you know, it's also a privilege and an honor to serve alongside you because we all are the church together. Amen. It's not about them up there and them over there and us down here. We are all priests of God. If we Amen. own Jesus as our savior, we are all priests together. There is no higher or lower. So be encouraged today. And I want to pray on behalf of Chris and the church council for you. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for this precious precious assembly of priests, priests to you, our living God, those that are watching that can't be with us, that are part of our priesthood of believers here in Los Montesinos and in Salt Church, wider Salt Church, including Los Alcatraz. I want to thank you, Lord, for every single person Lord God, we, we thank you for the many gifts and talents, for the unseen prayers, the, the work that goes on behind the scenes, the heartbeat that many people have for Salt Church and for the ministry of Salt Church in this region, for the gospel of Jesus. Lord, I pray your blessing on every person assembled. I pray, Lord, that we will grow together, move forward together, and stick together through thick and thin. And I want to bless you in Jesus' name and honor each one of you for all you are in his name. Amen. God bless you. You may take your seats. Amen. Amen. Well, as we've, uh, we've said, I can see we're going to have a mantra for this year, aren't we? Uh, God has a plan. The plan works, so work the plan. And uh, thank you, Lord, that your plan was different to my plan. And so I won't have any notes whatsoever, but I have the best notes in the world, don't I? Because I have the Bible, the Bible, the best instruction before leaving earth. And so I just want to, in the last 10, 11 minutes or so, uh, for those who've got a stopwatch, uh, I just want to just unpack a little bit more about, about unity. It does seem to me that right from the start in our prayer room, uh, the theme for today has been unity. And it's um, absolutely perfect that we had communion on this Sunday because communion is a call to unity. And uh, Paul, uh, after he had taught the Corinthians the meaning of the bread and the wine and the table, 
after he had challenged them to sort out their lives, to sort out their attitudes, to look inside themselves with honesty and to judge themselves so that God wouldn't judge them, he goes on in chapter 12, uh, which is the very next chapter, to talk about unity. In my, in my Bible, it's got a perfect title uh, for Salt Church. Unity and diversity in the body of Jesus Christ. Amen? Unity and diversity in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the call of Jesus is to every single person on this planet. Jesus uh, was living under the covenants of God. He fulfilled the whole law of God. And the, the summation of the law of God is to love God with everything you've got and to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus loves every person, even his enemy. And whilst we were enemies, Christ died for us. So Jesus loves the whole diversity of peoples on this planet. He loves all of the people, whatever their background, whatever their problems, whatever their sins. You know, the vilest offender who truly repents to God a pardon from Jesus receives. Is that not correct? And so we are called as people to come into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ to come into the unity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to act out that unity in our church and in our community. And the way we love one another is a powerful, powerful picture to the outside world so that they can see God in us. Do you agree? Are you with me? So we are called to love God, to love us and to love our neighbor as ourself. And so we come to this part of Paul and he talks about unity and diversity in the body, the church. And he says this, just as a body though one, just as a body though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body. When we turn to Jesus Christ in repentance and faith and we say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done. You've taken my sin. You've washed me with your blood. The Holy Spirit immerses us into Jesus Christ and we become born again. We become saved, born from above. And whether we are, we're Jews or Gentiles, whether we were slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. And so the one body is not made up of one part, but of many parts. But significantly, every single one of us has the Spirit of God, the one Spirit from which to drink from. So we have one thing in common. Our salvation, we have one thing in common. The Holy Spirit has made his home in each and every one of us. So we are connected, united. Even though we are many, we are one because of our faith in Jesus Christ and our salvation and his spirit is in us. So many parts, but it's one spirit that is leading us and directing us. One spirit that is challenging each of us to stay in unity in our diversity. Now it goes on. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm, Paul started something now. Paul, if you're watching this, Paul, I'm the foot and the hand. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. Now, that's a real challenge, isn't it? That is a challenge to all of us. Because sometimes something might happen in church, and we might want to say, well, actually, I want to cut myself off from the church. But if you're in Christ, you can't do that. You are to stay in unity and to stay even though we are different in our diversity. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Hallelujah. 
Do you know that you are just who God wants you to be if you hear his word and act upon it, if you set aside differences, God has made you, God has called you with all of your foibles, your gifts and your talents, once in Christ, you are in the right place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. So in Salt Church, if you are called, and this is your spiritual home, this is the place where you know God has placed you, you are called to be active in this church. Whether you're a finger, a hand, a foot, it doesn't matter. The body functions together all as one. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be the weaker are indispensable. What a lovely phrase. You know, there are so many times in my life I have felt so weak. The pressures of leadership, the pressures that come upon us as people, we can actually feel that we're being uh, ground down or we're being pressed in on every side. But you know, God actually likes the person who has an attitude of weakness. Because in our weakness, he can work and he can be revealed to be strong. Amen. So if you're feeling weak this morning, if you're feeling that there isn't really a place for you, actually you're wrong in that attitude because there is a place for you. There's a place for every single person in the body of the church. And God calls all of us to be active with the gifts and the skills that he has given us to use. And in fact, the whole church functions better when we're all doing something in the church. So we honor everybody. There's so many people in Salt Church who are doing things. So many people in Salt Church who, who are serving the church. And everyone is to be honored. So if you feel weak, actually the weak parts are indispensable. So actually you are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are presentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So there should be no division in the body. God has made his church to be like the Trinity. No division. To be one body in one place, called to one vision, one strategy, to work together as Christ on the earth. And that is our mission. So there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Do you know, um, actually David was, was playing a great song, wasn't he? And uh, he, I always wondered how you can play um, um, a piano with 10 fingers because you're looking at 10 different notes all at the same time. I mean, how, how does that work? And I, I was there thinking of David, and I thank God that we were made with 20 fingers. Just imagine looking at 20 notes to try and play the piano. I mean, that would be impossible, wouldn't it? Um, but what God has done, he has made his body the perfect fit. He's made us to be a perfect fit, to work together as one in unity, in our diversity. And you might feel that you're slightly awkward. You might feel that you are slightly weaker. You might feel many things, but it doesn't change the fact that we are one body and that we are actually equal. The parts should have equal concern for each other. There's no division in the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter what we're called to, whether, it, whether it, 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 it's, it's on the church council, there's no difference between us in the eyes of God. But we are to be called to do what he's called us to do in the body. Amen. And it goes on to say, if one part suffers, every part suffers. We had that this morning. My heart was moved over the Philippines. And, uh, and I sat, and, and, I, and I, I'm an emotional person. I... I had tears as I'm looking at my, my brothers and sisters and everybody else. But my heart connection to my brothers and sisters 
It's a deep-seated heart because the same spirit lives in them as lives in me. So we are part of not just Salt Church, we're part of the worldwide family of God. And if one part is hurting, then I experience the pain and the hurt and the suffering. But also I experience the joy of the commitment and the determination for the body to come together and to function in disaster. And what a lovely picture. Did you see the picture at the end? The pastor laying hands on someone's head in prayer. This is what church is. This is what unity is. This is what being strong is. Even though there's weakness around us, there's a turmoil, the wind is blowing, being together like what we saw, being together like what we are, actually is real church in unity, doing the work of God in this world. So if one part suffers, then every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, then every part rejoices with it. So I hope you're rejoicing this morning because we've been honoring a lot of people, haven't we? It was a real privilege to be prayed for by the council. I feel built up. I, I, feel, I feel loved in a real deep-scented way because that's what unity does. It brings a real sense of connection and purpose and a strength and when you're in unity, it's hard to be divided. The Bible says a house divided cannot stand. And that's why it's so important to remain in unity. And when we are in unity, three strands that come together, a cord is not easily broken. That is the power of unity. And when we are in unity, in love, in our diversity in the body of Christ, God really starts to do things. Amen? And this is the year where God is going to do things. Now look, I know, I know you're coming out of a load of stuff, and I know you know, but God is going to do something big and profound this year. He's going to be changing us. He's going to be taking us into a different vision. He's taking us out into our community. I, I thank God we've got a table. In fact, the table uh, which, ha which was housing the food was buckling. We, I think we need a stronger table. Keep bringing the stuff. Because we are doing the work of Christ. We are showing the world the compassion and the love of Jesus through us to this world. Now, if you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it, and God has placed in the church, so we're equal, but we're diverse. We have a different function. There's no difference. And here's a list. And there's no difference in importance or love or purpose that comes from God. And God has placed in the church, first, all apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different types of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And the greater gift that Paul goes on and he's building to is love in unity in our diversity in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? We have all got different gifts. The great thing about this list of gifts is, yes, they're all different, but they're all vitally and equally important. And the way I read my Bible, Paul expected them to be in operation within the church at Corinth. And when we have our prayer ministry team, we are to expect things to happen when they pray. Hallelujah. And we've had a number of testimonies coming out, and I have promised Dee and Pete that I'm going to go for prayer and allow them to get their hands on me. Amen? <laughs> so be prepared for that, because I'm coming uh, right at the end of the service. Okay. And so... The whole of our service seems to me just a reminder of what we should already know, but maybe struggle to put into practice, that we are all equal in the eyes of God. We are all different people, different backgrounds. We are very diverse, yet we all have the one spirit through our salvation and being born again that unites us in the body of Christ. Every time we do communion, the message of communion is our unity. The message of communion is what Paul went on to tell and what I've gone on to tell you today. So I want to say Salt Church has been a great demonstration, I believe, 
of where God is taking us at the beginning of this year, a reaffirmation, a reaffirmation of one another to God, a reaffirmation of one another to each other, a reaffirmation of leadership to leadership, a reaffirmation of leadership to the church, and a reaffirmation of the church to the leadership. Can you see how all of this works and how all of this is speaking about one, one body, one purpose, one unity, one place, one name that God has given us, Salt Church. That's who we are. That's our expression. And to all of the other churches who, who believe in the Bible, who, who believe in the truths of Scripture, then we're on the same page. And we're part of a global church. And we demonstrate our love by what we can do. So, Salt Church, God bless you. I, uh, I cannot overemphasize how important it is to be who we are. And I was thinking, uh, when the prayer came this morning, I was thinking, my goodness, the closest thing to, to real church in so many ways actually is who we have to become. Because, as I said earlier, we would naturally, as human beings, just gravitate to the church that suited us, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we normally gravitate to the church as it does? And yet, we are gravitated to this church. One, because there's not that many churches around. But two, we have this amazing, amazing witness that we can be by being united and by loving one another and doing, and doing the plan that God has for his church. That makes us incredibly special. Do you know that? That makes us at Soul Church really, really very special indeed. We might have differences. We might be diverse. But let's stay in the unity of Christ with one spirit, with one plan. Let's work the plan because the plan works. Amen. 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 When Chris was actually praying for the um, leadership, one word came into my heart and it was chapter. And then when Chris got up and stood about, said something about the chapter, the Lord gave me a very short word about this. And he said very clearly, the chapter that you have been in, the chapter that you have been reading, and sometimes has been fraught and difficult, and sometimes you have wanted to close the book altogether and not read on because you were afraid what was next coming. But the Lord said, that chapter is over. And the Lord said, a new chapter is about to begin. The Lord said, I cannot force you to open the chapter, but I advise you, says the Lord, to look at the next chapter in the book, for this is the book of your hearts. The Lord said, I know exactly what I have written there. And he said, sometimes when things are difficult, and very challenging or wearing us down. We want to close the book and leave it where it is. But the Lord said, look at the next chapter. For often difficult times are given to my church so that it will grow, it will grow. And the Lord said, I want to take my house onto another level. And the Lord said, this level is where you will no longer sit on the bank side that you will learn to swim. For the Lord said, it's time for us to come out of the classroom into the world. And he said, in this chapter, there is more things than you could possibly imagine. Amen. Amen. Wow, what an encouraging word to finish with. It, there was that scripture earlier about, you know, where your treasure is, your heart is also, but I just feel we've had such a treasure chest of wonderful things that the Lord has shown to us this morning. So as we now close the service, let's just, let's just keep digging in as the week goes on into the wonders that God has for us and just keep our hearts open before him so that he can transform us more and more and more by his grace. Those